welcome to 3Q, where I interview industry professionals for just 15 minutes by asking three powerful questions. I'm your host, Rachel Vogel, and joining me tonight is Tazita Makuria, Vice President of a and at Pulse Music Group. Tazita joined Pulse after seven years with the Artist Publishing and Partner Group, otherwise known as APG, where she was responsible for signing multi-platinum phenomenon Bozzy, R&B artist Sabrina Claudio, and powerhouse production duo Rice and Peas. She's also assisted in putting together remarkable records for artists like Kalani and Jason Derulo, as well as worked with in-demand songwriters like Derek Milano. She was included in Variety's Hitmakers List in 2018, And she's known for her very special hands-on approach. So it's no surprise that she's become a trusted tastemaker and rising executive. So I'm so excited to have you join us. How are you? How's it going? What have you been up to? Tell us everything. (laughs) (laughs) I'm doing so well. Thank you so much for having me. Um, Just getting ready. It's the last week of the year. So just trying to get (laughs) as much done as possible. Love it. All right. Well, with that said, are you ready for question one? I am. Let's do it. Imagine for a second, you're sitting down with your 25 year old self. What one piece of advice would you give her on a personal note? And what one piece of advice would you give her from a business perspective? Oh, I love this. I'd say on the personal side, I would tell myself to go travel more. For so many years, I took no vacation days and I'd only go home for the holidays. So I'd go to Boston every year for the holidays and it was nice, but I could have been doing so much more. Um, And I really regret not being more intentional about taking trips. I've been better recently and seen how much it can really inspire and rejuvenate like your spirit, how you show up professionally, how you show up, you know, in your personal life with your friends and your family. Uh, And I think a big part of that was that it was kind of like the hustle, no days off culture was really glamorized for a while. Um, Mm -hmm. And I think it's not so much anymore. I think people have, you know, seen how important taking breaks is. Uh, And so, yeah, I would just really, I would have encouraged myself to go and see the world as much as you can. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then the professional side, you know, one of the things that I think has been like the most beneficial for me and the advice that I give to a lot of people is when you're starting out to really not focus so much about networking up. I know when I had signed my first few artists, there were certain people that I really wanted to meet and, you know, pick their brain and get in front of. But once you've been doing this for a while, you really realize that your peers are your power base and they're they're the people that you're going to be hopefully running companies alongside. And so really work on nurturing those relationships. I mean, some of the people that I interned with are now working with some of the biggest artists and you know I have those relationships because we built them over the years and stayed in touch and made sure that we were doing things together so I would have told myself you know don't stress so much about meeting the big wigs like the people that you're you know in this game with and your peers at other companies that are also assistants or coordinators you know Mm -hmm. they're the people to really build with. Totally. So back to your answer to the first half of the question, any trip that was a big highlight for you? Any recommendations? (laughs) Yeah. So this summer I was really fortunate enough to go to Greece and back to Italy with my mom. And it was such a special trip. I actually had studied abroad in Italy and it played such a significant role in my desire to work in music actually. So being able to go back after, I mean, goodness, so many years, maybe like it, 10 years since mm-hmm. I had been there uh, was really special and felt really full circle and just just being in like a different place you know different language culture food it does so much for you and I've always said seeing how music travels is I mean that really especially when you live in LA and work in the music industry you can kind of feel like a bubble Mm -hmm. and so when you can go like I remember being in this tiny little like town in Greece called Paros and like I had, I was working with Jason Drew at the time. And one of his songs that we had dropped was playing in this little like jewelry shop in Paros. And I'm like, man, this is so cool to see how music travels and how it affects people and just their everyday lives. So um, yeah, that was a really special trip. Awesome. Love that. We're moving along. Question two, every industry has its dirty little secrets and you and I both know that it's no different in the music industry, but sometimes people think that's a bad thing, but that's not always the case. Sometimes they can be good. What's one secret you would like to share with our listeners about the industry? 
<laughs> Love little secrets. Um, <laughs> one of the, I, I don't know if this is a secret, but I would say is that sometimes work ethic and I've seen sometimes that work ethic and hustle can sometimes outbeat talent. Um, and I've seen many instances where maybe from a roster of producers, someone who maybe isn't the most like technically the, you know, the most sonically advanced have more success just because they're incredible at networking. They're great at maintaining relationships. They're great in the room. Artists want to be around them. They have a great vibe. Maybe they contribute in different ways. Um, and I've seen that lead to a lot more placement sometimes than just being super technically skilled, but maybe you're not great in the room or you don't really prioritize building relationships, or maybe you go into a session and you know, you don't ask the person for their number after and stay in touch and you don't kind of go that extra mile. Uh, so much of the music industry on the creative side, but also the executive side is about relationships. So the better you are at cultivating and maintaining those, the more success I think you will have ultimately. Uh, and I'm not saying that to say that talent isn't a meaningful differentiator, because of course it certainly is. But I think sometimes people generally underestimate how important some of these other factors are. Mm -hmm. Well said. And I think it's interesting from your perspective because a is such a creative role in itself. So I'm wondering what were the kind of characteristics that you had to develop over time that you think helped you get into the role that you're in? Wow. Well, definitely when I first started, it was spending as much time as possible in the studio that really helped accelerate my relationships with producers and songwriters and artists and them seeing me there. First of all, I learned so much of just like how to navigate a studio session, mm -hmm. how to give feedback, but also they started trusting me more because they're like, oh, you're here all the time. Like you, you know what my sound is or you know what I like. And I, that it just, it did so much for me. If you, you, if you kind of remove yourself from the creative process, it's really hard for creatives to, to trust your, your, you know, right. your judgment or maybe a piece of advice that you have on how a song could be better. So I would definitely say like those skills I learned early on in the studio were like incredible. Awesome. Okay. Well, we're at the last question. Here we go. Throughout your career, I can only imagine that you've been asked plenty of questions, whether for an industry conference, the media, or maybe even a promotion. But throughout all of those interviews and all of those questions, I'll bet there was one that you've never been asked but would have liked to. So what is that question and what would be your answer? Hmm, this is really interesting. So, I mean, I think this is really specific to a &Ring, but I would say just in terms of deal making and deal closing, one of the best pieces of advice I would like to impart to people, but I never really get asked this, is just that every deal isn't your deal. And what I mean by that is early on in my career, I was so eager to sign things that I found myself sometimes chasing things that it w weren't necessarily things that I really loved, but mm. maybe they were researching or there was some sort of industry hype around it. And I wanted to be the person to get that deal. Uh, and I, I think, you know, what I've learned since then is, and it might not apply to every executive, but for me, like I do, first of all, the deals are the smoothest and I do the best job when I really connect with the music and I really love the artist and I see a vision there. Um, and yeah, so I would just say like every deal isn't your deal just because something is like the hottest thing out and everyone's chasing it. And there's a bidding war that doesn't necessarily mean you should get involved in it. You know, maybe there's mm -hmm. other ways you can connect to the project. If you work on the publishing side, maybe it's getting a writer or producer in, but yeah, just, just, you know, the more intentional you can be about the deals that you really go after. I think the, the higher your, you know, your, your striking average will be. Especially in the age of the digital space right now, you could think of something super hot and tomorrow you could sign it. And then the next day it's not super hot. Absolutely. And that's why I think talent always wins in the end, you know, and like, you know, in the digital space, you know, we have all these markers, right. And we have all these ways to see like what's doing well and what's, you know, researching. And th those are all really great tools and, you know, use them, but just, I think ultimately go after something that you're really, really passionate about. And you'll have, I think you will see a, a big return on it. And sometimes it does take time. Um, but I think it usually is worth it. 
Totally. Well said. Well, Tasita, it has been wonderful having you on tonight. I appreciate you taking the time to chat. And to all of my listeners, stay tuned for next week's episode of 3Q, where I interview industry professionals for just 15 minutes by asking three powerful questions. See you next time. 